Hi, everyone, and welcome to our Blue Hornet webinar, The Rise of the Mobile Wallet, New Opportunities for Email Marketers. Um, my name is Ashley Deese, and again, I'm the Digital Marketing Manager here at Blue Hornet. And today I'm joined by Manny Ju, our Director of Product Management here at Blue Hornet, and guru of all things mobile marketing. Um, before we get started, we have one housekeeping item for you. Um, after the webinar, we'll have a live Q&A session. So to um, enter your questions, just go ahead and click on the floating icon on the top of your screen, and you can, answer, or you can ask questions there, and we will be sure to get to them at the end of the presentation. So with that, I will turn it over to Manny. Hi, uh, thank you very much, Ashley. Hello, I'd like to formally introduce myself to you all today. My name is Manny Ju. I am the Director of Product Management here at Blue Hornet. Uh, my role here is to propose strategic initiatives to the Executive Committee. And, uh, but really, my job here is to make sure that email marketers who are using the Blue Hornet platform are as successful as possible. So I'm here today to talk about the rise of the mobile wallet and the opportunities that are there available for email marketers. Really, really excited to share the story with you, so let's go ahead and get started. The foundation for today's story on the rise of the mobile wallet, it starts with a review of three important revolutions in commerce. Uh, in the beginning, commerce was conducted on the barter system. Uh, right, I have something, you have something, so we're going to exchange goods for services or goods for goods. But you know, the problem with barter is that it's really, really inefficient. And, and it's not very scalable. Because, for example, if I'm sick and I'm in need of medical attention, and I'm a farmer and all I do is grow beans, well, it might be a while before I find the right doctor who has a need for beans in exchange for his healing services. So the first revolution in commerce was the usage of currency. Currency made commerce transferable. With currency as the standard medium for exchange, commerce became a lot easier and a lot more efficient. But the drawback of currency, though, is that the currency literally has to pass from hand to hand. So the second revolution in commerce was the invention of the credit card. Credit cards make commerce transportable. Let me give you an example. Um, recently, my toaster blew a fuse. And so I searched online and I found out I can actually buy a replacement fuse. And it turned out it was this tiny little shop in Taiwan. So I did not have to fly clear around the world to hand over currency from my pocket to the shopkeeper to get it. Instead, I was able to complete the entire transaction without ever leaving my, phone, my home. And I did it entirely by credit card. That's transportable commerce. The third revolution in commerce is the digital wallet. The digital wallet makes commerce transparent. In September of 1999, uh, that's where I believe the birth of transparent commerce came about, because that's when the U U.S. Patent Office granted Amazon patent number 5,960,411. It was the patent for the one-click purchase. Because the idea is that by storing your credit card information in Amazon's digital wallet, you no longer had to think about commerce at all. With a single click of a button, ownership became instant. The first real digital wallet came about, or, or the most popular one, right, came about in, in 2000. It's amazing that 13 years have passed. Uh, I'm feeling very old all of a sudden. Three things that PayPal did to revolutionize commerce was the first thing is they eliminated the risk of online shopping. Um, for those of you who are old enough to remember when e-commerce first came online in the heady days of the dot-com era, people were a little reticent to enter their credit card information online. Uh, and so PayPal came along and mitigated that risk because you became a PayPal member 
and they took care of it. So your credit card was hidden. You were able to transact business online. Uh, the second thing that PayPal did to revolutionize commerce was they enabled online commerce for a lot of people who don't have credit cards. You could fund your PayPal account directly from a bank account, right? And the third thing that PayPal did that revolutionized commerce was that they made e-commerce transparent. Because if you had logged into PayPal at least once, you hadn't cleared your browser cookies, then any time you clicked on the Pay with PayPal logo on an e-commerce site, then the payment was immediate. There was no other intermediate step. Now, the mobile wallet is the next progression of the digital wallet. So interest in the digital wallet, well, it's huge, right? Everywhere you look, there's yet another initiative. There's yet another consortium for the mobile wallet. So in the beginning of the mobile wallet, forward-thinking people were looking at mobile wallets as the next evolutionary step beyond the credit card. Well, there's a problem. That is, you can't slide a mobile device through a slot like you can a credit card. So they started looking at a new type of wireless communication that was emerging at that time. Because after all, a cell phone is a wireless communicator. It's a radio transfer and it's a radio receiver. So they were looking at this new wireless technology that went by the initials of NFC. NFC stands for Near Field Communication. It allows data transfer between a transmitter and a receiver simply by touching the two devices. Now, perhaps you recall that really cool commercial that Samsung did about a year ago where it showed one person transferring his music playlist to another person simply by touching a smartphone to the other person's smartphone. Remember that? Well, near field communication is also the technology behind payments in store and at kiosks. The way it works is this way. Your smartphone has a mobile app which is your digital wallet. The mobile app communicates with a microchip on your NFC enabled smartphone and then the microchip manages the communication between your smartphone and an NFC enabled point of sale system. So then the data that gets transferred becomes the digital currency. Now, NFC has been around for a long time, many, many, many years. But the problem is it really hasn't taken off. Um, uh, Asia is really where you see a little bit more. But really, if you look at it here, it, it's really not really widely adopted. And here's the reason why. There's a conundrum. Because as a consumer, why, you don't, why bother paying by way of NFC when there aren't that many NFC-enabled point-of-sale systems. And as a merchant, why bother spending all that time, all that money, upgrading to an NFC-enabled point-of-sale system if there aren't that many people wanting to pay by way of NFC? So how do you get started? That's the problem. So to a marketer, there really isn't that much of an opportunity for mobile payments via near-field communications. So where is the biggest opportunity for digital wallets and for mobile wallets? Well, the opportunity for commerce by digital wallets is actually found online. There's no place else where transparent commerce through digital wallets is more effective than online. Because there's no need now to enter a credit card or any payment information during the purchase process, right? We, you like a song on iTunes? Touch a button, and you're yours. You're listening to it. You're on your Kindle Fire, reading a book. You want another book? Touch a button, and you're and then within seconds that book's yours. Are you playing an online game? You're in the middle of the game. You want to upgrade your weaponry? Touch a button and you are ready to rumble. So what do mobile wallets mean to the email marketer? Because this, after all, is a webinar on email marketing. Well, the story goes this way. According to a survey published by Marketing Sherpa, the number one email marketing business objective 
is to increase revenue. And according to another survey published by Marketing Sherpa, the number one mobile marketing business objective is to increase revenue. So it, given that the number one objective of mobile marketing is to increase revenue, and the number one objective of email marketing is to increase revenue, it follows, therefore, that the number one objective of mobile email marketing is to do what? Increase revenue. There is a direct line connecting mobile email and mobile commerce. I'm showing you now the survey responses of over 1,000 consumers across the United States. Um, it was a survey that Blue Hornet published earlier this year. And take a look at what you're seeing here. Almost two out of every three individuals are likely to buy directly from a mobile device. I mean, directly from an email on their mobile device. So if you want to maximize revenue from your email marketing program, then a mobile-friendly email experience now becomes very, very important. Here's an example I'd like to share with you of a major fashion retailer that is doing a very good job with the mobile experience. Now, they don't use responsive design in their emails, but nevertheless, the way that they've structured the emails, they do render very well on mobile devices as well as on desktops. When you view their email on a mobile device and then you click on any of the links or images in their email, then their website automatically detects that you want to view the landing page in a mobile browser. And so it automatically serves up the mobile-friendly version of the landing page. When you're ready to pay for what you want, you get a mobile-friendly payment page. So the mobile experience is a full end-to-end -end experience starting from the mobile-friendly email, moving to the mobile-friendly landing page, to the mobile-friendly payment page. It's because of this well-thought-through mobile experience that this brand has an extremely highly mobile-engaged email audience. Check this out. Almost four out of every five people who opened the email did so on their mobile devices. Seven out of every ten people who clicked through from the email did so on their mobile devices. Almost one out of every two people who ended up buying did so on their mobile devices. So there's one more point that I'd like to make. With the email responders being so overwhelmingly mobile email responders, is there anything more that can be done that is to convert more mobile email responders into mobile buyers? I believe, yes, there is a little bit room for improvement. And here's what I'm, gonna, I'm talking about. Take a look at it on the left side. The payment page on the standard website supports a digital wallet. It's the V.me by Visa. It's one of the initiatives that I showed you earlier about the mobile uh, digital wallets. But you'll notice it's not there on the mobile site, the mobile site payment page. So my point is this. By more aggressively implementing digital wallets on their mobile site, this retail brand can make commerce virtually transparent to the user, making it that much quicker that much easier to buy. I'll talk now about digital wallets and mobile wallets as the next revolutionary step in, in commerce. What other opportunities are there with regards to shopping from email marketing promotions? Well, this is interesting that uh, I became aware of recently. There's a startup company called AtPay that has introduced a novel concept that enables consumers to buy products from an email without ever leaving the email client. So according to their process, the first step, well, it's the same way as any other email. Choose a product, then you click the button, right? Now, usually, when you click a button in an email, 
What's the next thing that happens? Uh, your browser loads a web page, right? But they take a different approach, which is what caught my attention. And their approach, when you click the Buy It Now button, an email is automatically created in your email inbox, and it contains a secure token that then you send the email yourself to authorize the payment of that purchased item. The idea is that if you're an AdPay member, then the unique secure token includes a reference to your account, your email address, so that no one can buy anything on your behalf. The email has to come from you. For those of you who have some familiarity with HTML coding, well, the technology behind AppPay's concept is actually it's pretty simple. The default protocol of a web link is HTTP. That's why when you click a link in an HTML email, the usual action is to load a web page. The link itself contains all the information about which the web page is to load in your browser, right? But web links support other protocols besides HTTP. In AppPay's approach, the protocol of the web link is actually SMTP, which happens to be the protocol of internet email. So when you click the link in an AppPay enabled email, the next action is to create a new email in your default email client. The link in the original email that you click from then contains all the information about what the new email will say. You as a consumer, all you need to do then is click the send button. Now, this is new. This is interesting. But whether this new approach to buying products and services directly from an email will ever take off mm, remains to be seen. Right? It's still early stages. So I thought about it, and I, I can see one aspect of email marketing where two-click purchasing without ever leaving the email client could be useful. And here's where I see it. Think about this. Mobile devices are instant gratification devices. Using a single device, I can communicate with anyone, anywhere, anytime I want. I can listen to my music anytime I want. I can read a book, a newspaper, a magazine, anywhere I want. I can watch TV, movies, videos. I can play games. I can find out where I am and where I need to be going. I can find out anything about any time, anybody. And I can do it anytime, anywhere I happen to be, all from a single device. And most importantly, I can buy just about anything, anytime, anywhere I happen to be. Mobile devices are instant gratification devices. Mobile emails are perfect for instant gratification offers. Mobile email gives you the ability to drive additional revenue for your overall email marketing program. Deal of the day emails are perfect examples of instant gratification offers. An instant gratification email, such as a deal of the day email, is the ultimate in WYSIWYG. What you see is exactly what you get. You either like what you see or you don't. And if you like what you see, you want it, and if you want it, you want it now. Here's an example of one brand's deal of the day email. This email has a strong mobile engagement. Four out of every ten people who opened the email did so on their mobile devices. Four out of every ten people who clicked within the email did so on their mobile devices. Why doesn't this deal of the day email have as high a mobile responder audience as the other brand does? Well, could be a number of things, but here's one possible reason. Because even though the deal of the day email is a mobile friendly email, unfortunately, the landing page that it takes you to isn't. Uh, that has got to be one of the most unfriendly, mobile unfriendly landing pages I've ever seen. 
So as I said before, one way to drive up mobile email engagement is to lead mobile email clickers to a mobile-friendly landing page. But let's go back up to what I was just talking about a moment ago. Deal of the day emails are instant gratification emails. They are WYSIWYG emails. Everything you need to know about the deal should be self-evident in the email. If that's the case then, is there really a need to send someone to a website to complete the purchase if you don't have to? Why not then let someone make the purchase without ever leaving the email client? Offering the ability to buy a product directly from an email client could be one way of increasing revenue from instant gratification emails. So this is a new concept. Uh, I'd like to see if it plays out. So keep your eye on it. Let's consider one final point about the mobile wallet because there are other things of value besides currency that you keep in your wallet. Um, referring, of course, to everyone's favorite coupons. More and more people are considering mobile devices as logical substitutes for paper when it comes to redeeming in-store coupons. And there's one new thing that's becoming more and more associated with mobile coupons. That new thing is Passbook. Passbook is a native iOS application that is a single storage for coupons, uh, travel boarding passes, event tickets, and loyalty cards. Uh, I understand that there's a lot of development going on on the Android platform. So when I say Passbook, I'm just referring it to the concept of an app that stores. Um, there are many, many other apps similar to Passbook, but I'm just citing this because it's built into the operating system of, of Apple devices. So let me ask you this. Have you ever ended up in the checkout line fishing through your wallet or your purse for that buy one, get one free coupon? I mean, after all, that's, that's the reason why you're there at the store to buy it, and now you're in the line and you can't find that coupon. Or have you ever returned home from shopping only to realize, oh, you had a coupon for the item that you just bought, and there's the coupon stuck to the refrigerator to remind you not to forget it? Well, thanks to Passbook, you'll never forget a coupon again for two reasons. Number one, your coupons are always with you because they're stored on your smartphone. And of course, you always have your smartphone with you, don't you? And number two, Passbook coupons are location aware. That means that your smartphone will start beeping and display an on-screen message the moment you are near a store you're holding a coupon for. Passbook and email marketing are a match made in heaven. As you can see from our survey, deals are the number one reason by far why consumers sign up to receive promotional emails. Consumers love discounts. In fact, as you can see, they love them almost 11% more this year than they did last year. Email is the perfect distribution channel for, for coupons. As an email marketer, you have access to a rich palette of data available for audience segmentation. That's all email marketers have that. This means that you can send highly targeted, highly relevant coupons and loyalty cards to your most avid followers. Emails can include an add to passbook link that when clicked automatically stores the coupons in the passbook app on the person's mobile device. What have we learned today? The digital wallet and its younger sibling, the mobile wallet, are the next revolutionary step in commerce. Digital wallets make commerce transparent. Digital wallets make ownership instantaneous. The mobile experience is an instant gratification experience, but I want to remind you that the mobile experience just isn't about the email. 
Yes, you want the email to render well in the mobile device, but don't stop there. The mobile experience starts with the mobile-friendly email, and it includes the mobile-friendly landing page, the mobile-friendly cart, the mobile-friendly payment page. Make it as easy as possible for your mobile email readers to buy directly from their mobile devices. Aggressively use mobile wallets to make the payment experience as transparent as possible. And lastly, remember what consumers are telling you. There are three reasons why people subscribe to email marketing promotions. Deals, deals, and more deals. If coupons and loyalty cards are integral parts of your email marketing program to drive in-store traffic, then make it that much easier for them to always have your coupons with them. Allow your subscribers to add the coupon to their Passbook app. So there you have it. These are some new things that are happening, advances in the mobile wallet, what they mean to you as an email marketer. And as you can tell, I get really excited about mobile. Mobile is my passion. So here's my contact information you see on screen. If you're doing anything cool with mobile, love to hear from you. Uh, things that you're seeing that's working for you, new trends that you see emerging, love to have that conversation with you. So thank you very much for joining us today. All right, thank you. So we have a few questions that have come in for Manny. Um, the first one is, uh, what about mobile emails that open in an app if it's downloaded on the user's device? Have you seen any retail? I'm sorry, any retailers doing this? And if so, what are the benefits in mobile email to app versus mobile email to site? Mobile emails to app. Well, that's a good question. Apps are are interesting because apps are good indicators of loyalty. Because you really think about this is um, real estate on a smartphone is very precious. So people who add your app to their smartphone, these are very loyal people. On the other hand, going from an email directly to a website, that's going to be more mainstream because maybe not every one of your buyers are loyalists, right? Everybody knows that as an email marketer, you're going to have a larger pool of casual buyers and within that, you're going to have a smaller pool of people who are loyal buyers. If you want, you can do both. But really, um, most emails that I've seen take you to a mobile site, or to say take you to a website. And then of the ones that take you to a website, there are a, small, there are a growing percentage of websites that are starting to become more mobile friendly. Going to a mobile app, those are really for brands that have a rabid fan base where they know that people can buy directly from the app. Okay. All right, um, next question. This seems to be a pretty big project for marketers to take on. What would you suggest as the first few steps when outlining the strategy to an executive team? Sure. It's all about increasing revenue, right? I mean, as we know, the number one objective of, of email marketing is to is to drive revenue. So our point is that mobile email initiatives and the initiatives I shared together with you, these are ways of driving incremental revenue. These are complements to your existing email marketing program. So that's the first thing. You don't want to scare off the, the executives by making them think that now they have to replace everything that you're doing. No, you are building upon the foundation of everything that you're doing. Now, the first thing, of course, the foundation of it all that we've always been saying is make sure your email renders well on a mobile device. Um, that's the first step. But at the same time, be thinking about uh, making areas of your website mobile friendly so people can actually see it. With regards to the different payment options that are out there, chances are that you can look for, uh, remember that slide I showed you of all the different initiatives that are there. You'll notice is that ISIS is a consortium of uh, all the major wireless carriers that include support for all the major credit cards. So it's not that hard to add support for any of the digital wallets to your e-commerce systems. 
Um, next question. Why do you feel or do you feel Passbook is the standard for digital wallets? Mm, good question. Um, it's, there's two main reasons why I believe that the Passbook concept uh, is, is, is intriguing. Uh, it hasn't really taken off that much, but I like it because, number one, it's there. It's part of your operating system. So it's not yet another app that you as a consumer have to add. Yes, there were other apps like it before, and of course Android will have theirs, but I like, first off, it's there in the uh, operating system. Number two, thing I like about Passbook and why I believe that it, it's the next, it represents the next step is that it's location aware. Mobile is all about where you are at that moment in time, right? It's not a desktop application where you're tethered to a wall or to a hot spot somewhere. You are, you're out and about everywhere, and the fact that Passbook coupons are location aware so that they remind you that you're holding a coupon. Because I don't know about you, you're probably like me where you've gone shopping, you come home, and then you realize you had the coupon in your wallet all this time, and you just forgot to use it. So what I like about Passbook is that it beeps my cell phone and then I, I'm in my, my iPhone, and then I know that, oh, I've got my coupon, and then I can use it. Um, all right. So a question about AtPay. With AtPay, where does the money come from? How is it funded? Sure. Think about AtPay is, is very similar in concept to PayPal. All right. PayPal, let me just start with a, a known entity. You know, we, we all know PayPal. You, you, uh, you become a PayPal member and you fund your PayPal account. Now, the value of PayPal, of course, is the network, right? The technology is not that, it's not what's the value of it. It's the network of, of merchants that support PayPal. That's the real value. So that's the thing about AtPay. Same concept. You become an AtPay member, you fund your AtPay account through however way you want to do it, either through a credit card or through a bank account. And then the value then becomes all the merchants that support paying via AtPay. Now, like I said, this is brand new, so no, there aren't that many merchants that support AtPay right now. So whether it will grow like PayPal does, I don't know. It's still early to be seen. But that's how it is. Just think of it as what you do with PayPal, that's the way you do it with AtPay. Okay. And then our final question um, regarding the Add to Passbook slide that you showed. Is that easy for this? any email marketer to add to any email that they're sending? Oh, sure. Good question. The first thing you do is you have to be able to create that Passbook pass. You know? And the nice thing is that the Apple developers have made it very, very easy to be able to create a Passbook pass. You can either have your ES check with your ESP, see if they have that ability. There are other parties out there that offer uh, tools to create your your Passbook Pass, one of them that comes to my mind is Urban Airship up in uh, Oregon. They have this really, really nice, easy-to-use application that you can create a Passbook Pass, and then all you do is embed a link, just like any other uh, link in your email. You can put a link in your email that then um, uh, will then load the, the, the pass. Now, the cool thing about it is think about the way that your smartphone works. You've got a link in your, you're reading your email in your email client. Let's just say you're using an iPhone and your uh, HTML email client, you're using Gmail, and that's your default email client. Well, when you click a link in, Gmail, in your email client, what happens? It loads your browser, right? And then it loads up the web page. The way that, because Passbook is integrated into your application, your, IO, your operating system, when you click a link on an email that contains a Passbook Pass, then the Passbook app automatically launches, and then the coupon gets automatically downloaded and inserted into Passbook. It's incredibly seamless, incredibly easy to do. So as an email marketer, the first thing to do is make sure that you can create the pass, and it's a very easy to do so. There are tools out there, and then you just include a link to that pass in your email. Perfect. Well, that concludes today's webinar, and thank you so much, Manny, for all of your info and insight, and thanks to all of you on the phone today for joining us. Um, we will be sending a recording of the webinar in the next few days, so enjoy the rest of your day, and we hope to see you next time.